Advanced Accounting 19 Consolidation Ownership Issue. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook email and phone number. This information was taken from the Advanced Accounting text from McGraw Hill Chapter 9. And I'd also refer you to our intermediate accounting videos when we talk about the call feature, our callable security. We talked in the last video about preferred stock, and now we're going to get a little more specific and talk about how it relates to a consolidation. If you recall, the word preferred means better, and why better? Well, preferred stock is better, quote unquote, than common stock for two reasons. First of all, if there is sufficient earnings, and if dividends are declared from those earnings, the preferred shareholder gets the dividend, their dividend, before a common shareholder. And there will be a way to calculate what that dividend will be. It will be a set dollar amount, or it will be a percentage of par, and that's going to be stated on the preferred stock certificate. A new term is the second bullet point at the bottom, which is cumulative preferred. Well, what if uh, the preferred dividend pays us $50 a year, and we don't get our $50 preferred stock dividend? If it's cumulative preferred, and that stated rate, that dollar amount is not paid, then cumulative preferred says it must be paid in the future before any other dividends are paid to preferred shareholders and before any dividends are paid to common shareholders. Common shareholders are always last in line. And we call that situation when a dividend is missed on cumulative preferred dividends and arrears. We can also have something called participating preferred stock. And by participating, that refers to participating with common shareholders. So let's go back to our $50 preferred stock example. I'm supposed to get $50 a year. But I also have the opportunity to participate in a common stock dividend up to a certain percentage of par is how it's usually stated. So if the company has a great year, a lot of earnings and declares large, larger than normal dividend, I, as a preferred shareholder, would get my $50 annually, plus I would get a portion of the dividend that's paid to common shareholders. I would participate on the common shareholder dividend up to a certain dollar amount or percentage of par. And the last term I'd like to cover is a callable, in this case, preferred stock. And I'd refer you to, I'm going to use PFD for preferred. I refer you to Intermediate Accounting 12 for our discussion of a callable bond. And the definition I list is the issuer has a choice of paying off the investor on or after a certain date. So at some point in the future, and this is stated on the certificate, the preferred stockholder can be paid off early. They're paid cash, and that preferred stock is no longer outstanding on or after a certain date in the future. And normally, that preferred shareholder is going to pay, be paid something more than the par value so that when that preferred stock is called in, it's somewhat attractive to the shareholder. Now, why would an issuer have callable preferred stock? And the reason is if they can refinance that stockholder's equity on more attractive terms, maybe issue preferred stock at a lower percentage rate or issue common stock instead with no set dividend required. That's why they do it. It's just like having the opportunity to refinance a home. I'm going to jump over to Excel and we're going to talk about a preferred stock example for cumulative callable preferred stock. Levi again is our parent. Hollywood Gene is our subsidiary. This information is the same as before. Levi's jeans acquires 80% of Hollywood jeans. This should actually be year zero, X zero. They pay the $240,000. Book value, there's a non-controlling interest that owns $60,000, same as the example before. But what's new is, and slightly different, is that Hollywood on X1101 issues $100,000, 12% preferred stock at par, 100% or $100,000. That's the par value. The preferred dividend they pay annually is $12,000, 100% of 12000 
But then there's new information because this is a cumulative preferred stock issue, which means if a dividend is missed, the preferred shareholder gets first dibs on any earnings that are paid as dividends in the future. And we say that it is callable at 105. That's the price it's callable at. 105 means 105 percent or $105,000. If we multiply 105% by $100,000, we get $105,000. Let's assume that Hollywood has a poor year in the year 2000XO and there's no dividend declared. And let's further assume that, I'm actually going to leave that as X1, I think it makes it easier. We're going to leave it as XO for a moment. Levi's jeans acquire 60% of that Hollywood's 12% preferred stock for $61,000. So, here's what Hollywood's equity account is going to look like. They have preferred stock of $100,000. We already talked about that. New information, they have common stock outstanding of $200,000. They have retained earnings of $100,000 for stockholders' equity totaling $400,000. So the common stock here and the retained earnings is new information. We already had the dividend on preferred stock is 12000 Now, if Levi acquired 60%, they're going to get 60% of 12000 or 7200 The remaining 4800 goes to the non-controlling interest, which is 40%. So what is that preferred stock interest on 11X1 when Levi makes the acquisition? Well, it's the par value of the stock. That's what Hollywood originally issued it for, 100000 But then we have to add in that call premium because if we pay off the investor early, we have to pay them 105,000, not 100. And we also have the dividends in a year of the 12,000. Somebody owned that bond. Somebody bought the bond from us when we issued it in 11XO. Now it's 11X1. We had a bad year and didn't pay a dividend. And we owe the 12,000, 12% 12 of 100,000 to someone else. So the total interest is 117,000. It's increased by the call premium and the dividends and arrears. We have two owners of the preferred stock. Levi's gets 60% of the 117. The non-controlling shareholder gets the rest. Now recall that we have this common stock of 200,000. Now let's talk about that. The common stock of 200,000. The retained earnings, though, instead of 100,000, is only 83. It's reduced by the call premium and the dividends and arrears totaling 700,000. So our common stock interest is only 283, not 200, not 300. So, like we've talked about in consolidations, we're going to have a differential. A difference between the book value, the consideration paid, and the fair value of assets we call differential. We've been talking about it in several videos now. Levi's originally paid $240,000, a non-controlling interest at a value of sixty. dollars That was way up at the top right here. So $300,000 was the original book value of the transaction. But now we find out that because of the dividend arrears and the call premium that the retained earnings is now lower by 17000 The common stock interest, when we add it all up, the common stock interest in the retained earnings is now 17000 lower in total. It used to be 300000 So we have a $17,000 differential. That's as far as we'll get on Advanced Accounting 19. You'll see our hour-long essential courses, our YouTube channel, for live one-on-one -on -one tutoring using gotomeeting.com. Here's our email, our website, and our phone number. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.